Welcome back to this year's Pixel Festival. I am finally getting a chance to speak to Ben Grosser. Now, uh, we have our cloud project last year as one of our main projects, and, uh, and along with some other projects as well. We, I believe you're more so taking on Mark Zuckerberg uh, this time. But uh, uh, do you want to describe yeah. some of the projects that you've got with us this year? Yeah, so I think in the in the main exhibition is uh, a pair of films that cover two different years for me. Um, the first one is a is a supercut called Order of Magnitude, and the second one is another supercut called Deficit of Less. And in, for the first one, Order of Magnitude in 2019, I after spending years of writing code and manipulating big tech platforms and often looking at the cultural effects of social media, I decided I wanted to take a step back and, and really think about who engineers software. Why does software end up the way it is? And so that led me to uh, watch every video ever recorded of Mark Zuckerberg speaking during his first 15 years of public life. So why did you it, do this to yourself? <laughs> yes, this is a reasonable question. Um, somebody has to do it, I guess is my answer. Um, so I, I sat down and I watched every video from when he was age 19 to age 34. So in other words, from 2004 to 2019, um, the first 15 years of Facebook, the company. And I decided to, to extract from those videos every time he said one of three things, every time he said the word more, every time he said the word grow, and every time he uttered a, a metric like 1 million or 2 billion. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to add that all up, you know, extract that from all that video, put it all together and, and see what it would be. And when I started, I thought, you know, this is going to be a long supercut that nobody is going to want to watch. It's going to be too long. It's going to be five minutes or eight minutes or 10 minutes. Who's going to want to watch 10 minutes of Mark Zuckerberg? Mm -hmm. But by the time I was done mm -hmm. with this process, it was almost 50 minutes long of nothing but those words. And I think the scale of that project is uh, on theme for its subject. Uh, so that that's really a, you know, so it really, I think, becomes a, a film that chronicles Silicon Valley's obsessions with growth over its first 15 years in the social media era. And then a couple of years ago, or actually just last year, sorry, I was uh, working on a, a solo exhibition at Arbite Gallery in London, and uh, they commissioned me to do a, another related work to this. And I decided to go back to the same archive of video and this time to look to see, did Mark Zuckerberg ever talk about less? Did he ever talk about the opposite of more? You know, how does he think about uh, the potential for doing less instead of more? And so I extracted, once again, <laughs> from all these videos, um, every time he spoke the word less. And I knew it wouldn't add up to 50 minutes like the first one, but I didn't know what the scale would be. And by the time I was done, it added up to less than 60 seconds of footage. And so I decided instead of just running a regular supercut that last less, lasted less than 60 minutes, I uh, decided to stretch it out to be exactly as long as the first film. So uh, to make his less as, as equal to his more. And so it really kind of animates him into an alternate reality where he um, speaks super slowly. It's like 50 times slower, essentially. Um, so those are the two main film, two films I have in that um, exhibition. And then I think we're also showing Minus in the Cyber Salon, um, which is, uh, it's an alternative social network. It's, um, it's, I'm really thinking about with that work, what if a social platform wasn't engineered to meet capitalism's goals for endless growth and um, and endless engagement of the user? What if it instead wanted less instead of more? And this was also for the exhibition in, at Arbite. They commissioned this one as well. And so it was. Uh, it's a functional social network where. Um, 
essentially it's what I call a finite social network where users get 100 posts for life, uh, where every time you post to the feed, it subtracts from your, your running total of how many posts you have left. And the only metric you see is a running count of that's dwindling for every user about how many times they have left to participate. And so it's an experiment, it's kind of a long-term experiment to see what kind of a community emerges in the face of a, of, of a different structure that isn't tuned to, to animate us all into endless engagement. Great, and um, what do you propose uh, in general? Uh, say someone is watching you out here now and they're like, I don't want to be part of an algorithm. I don't want to be uh, just uh, reduced to this for capitalism. What would you say, like what could people do instead of using things like F Facebook and Twitter and things like that? So it's a, it's a really complicated problem because you know, the, the quick answer you will hear most often is we'll just hashtag delete Facebook or just stay off Twitter or just don't use Instagram or et cetera. And that's maybe possible for a few people to truly just opt out. But because we have abdicated as a public, as a society, the responsibility of erecting viable global scale public squares for digital in um, most people have to participate in some way or another in these big tech platforms right now uh, because their family is there, because their work requires it, because they won't know about events if they don't do it. And so I think you can take on a variety of strategies. I certainly advocate with my own work and try to help people see opportunities for new agency in really approaching these platforms almost as a hostile encounter, um, thinking about what they want from us and then working to give it something different in, in return. So if a platform really just keeps pestering you to do more and more, try to give it less and less. <laughs> Dude, like use that as a signal. Um, if it, you know, in other words, treat, treat the, the platforms as a space of experimentation and play rather than a place to consume and produce. Um, while also then exploring alternative platforms. There are a lot of weird, strange alternative platforms out there and um, they aren't all trying to get us to um, only suck every moment of our, of our lives into them. And the only way those are going to have any viability is if people try them out, see what they offer, try to treat their distance from the status quo of big tech as, as something to value. Um, like, don't look for something that just reproduces Twitter right now, which is kind of in the news, of course, because Elon Musk just bought it. Um, but look for something that's radically different um, and, and embrace that difference. Thank you. And where do you see yourself going within the next few months with all of these projects? What can you tell us about what is next or is it top secret? So yeah, no, I can tell you about a couple of things. Um, one is that I'm currently um, one of my activities for the year is I'm a fellow at the Berkman Klein Center for Internet and Society at, at Harvard as part of their Institute of Rebooting Institute for Rebooting Social Media. And so I'm there I'm, it's really formalizing some study of, of what's happened on Minus and kind of looking at the cultures that emerge from its structures as a way of thinking about you know, the, the potential of finite social media structures versus infinite or pseudo infinite, which is how I would describe Facebook and TikTok and all the rest. And so I'm working on that and, and with a great group of people who are there and then the other is that I'm working on a much larger supercut um, that thankfully isn't watching, spending six months watching Mark Zuckerberg, but um, it's, I really am kind of looking at the history of, of film and TV over the last 40 years, essentially the, the personal computer era, the emergence of the personal computer in the home, but also in film and TV, um, thinking about the dual roles that, Emer kind of converge at some point, I would guess around 2005, where uh, I, want to, I want to pull everything I can find that is a moment in film that glorifies capitalism. And then I want to also 
have a second film. These will run next to each other. Um, that is going to pull every moment where the computer emerges as a character, where the, where the actors all of a sudden, you know, the characters in the film all of a sudden stop and wait for the computer to tell them what to do. And I want to put those together and run them together. And I think eventually they're going to converge where it's going to be hard for us to tell the difference between these two films, because it's really like, I'm trying to think about how the logics of capitalism computing and computing really came together and became one logic. So this is a big, long film and I've got students helping me mine for clips and uh, I've got a sabbatical next year to work on it. So, you know, who knows uh, how this is going to go, but uh, that's what I'm working on. And will you only use Western cinema or will they be uh, from different places as well? Like, for example, Soviet cinema or something or. Yeah, I mean, I'm currently I'm looking across. So my only limit is um, fictional narratives. And um, so I've been, you know, looking through and watching film and TV from all over, um, mostly lately from Europe. But um, I'm, I'm open to all options at this point and we'll see how it goes sounds fantastic will you be coming to the festival this year in person unfortunately i won't be Aww. no um i won't be there but i hope i hope i'm gonna with my um next year i hope to be spending a lot of time in europe um and so i don't know if uh maybe i know this is your big anniversary year but uh maybe it next is. year i'll be able to come You'll yeah, have congratulations to on that. Thank you. Sorry, I can't come. I'm too busy watching video clips of Mark Zuckerberg. Like in, um, <laughs> right. what's it called? The horrible film, A Clockwork Orange. Like with the... <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I really should, you know, on that front of like, what what becomes of someone when they spend that much time watching Mark Zuckerberg. And some of them <laughs> feel like they started to feel like Mark Zuckerberg and his voice became so familiar to me that it was a bit eerie and strange. And it still is strange when I see him continue to speak into the world. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it was a process. <laughs> well, thank you very much for a nice chat today and good yeah. luck with the next project. And thank yeah, hope it will come over anytime. It doesn't have to be during the festival, but you should come over here one time. Yeah, I would love to. I mean, you know, um, Certainly my intention right now is to, uh, for the, I'm working on kind of contacting places for the sabbatical just to kind of like be resident in Europe for a while. And Bergen's on my list for multiple reasons, you all, but also the, um, the group at, uh, like Scott Repberg and Jill Repberg and, um, the, their new center for digital narrative, I think it's called. Um, so I have multiple communities of people and I've never been to Bergen. So, you know, it's like one of the most beautiful places on the planet. So I would love to come. <laughs> cool. Thank you very much for today, Ben. And yep. see you soon. All right. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.